Hello, my name is Neville Page and welcome to my Noman workshop on virtual makeup design. I think this is going to be a fascinating journey. It was for me. Um, on the process that I've been using for feature films like Star Trek and the television series Star Trek Discovery, Picard, Strange New Worlds, where I utilize a process that I'm calling virtual makeup design. And the reason I call it virtual is because even though I'm using digital techniques, sculpting in ZBrush and some rendering in KeyShot and a little bit of post work in Photoshop, what makes this a very valuable technique in terms of the clients that I work with is that my goal is to present to them what looks like a finished product. And by finished, I'm including the actual use of particular materials that the makeup artist might be implementing. If it's silicone, I'll try and render the quality of the silicone product. If it's going to be latex, I'll try and render in the same quality of that product. And just as important, I'll be using lighting techniques, which the DP of those productions would be using to represent that character in. And what this does is it allows the director, more often than not, the opportunity to see the finished product on the actor in the exact scenario in terms of lighting that this makeup would be in. But it's entirely virtual. Now, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm a designer who happens to create content that would be turned into a practical makeup. But what's very important, what is a very valuable skill to have, is knowledge, as much as you can possibly have, of what the makeup department has to, to do in their process. So you're not handing them a design that's either, worst case scenario, unachievable, um, or a bad case scenario, very difficult to achieve. We want to, of course, do things that, that challenge us, um, but we don't want to do things that are not cost effective, not safe, not mindful of the actor, not mindful of direction, etc. So by starting this off with the design process, I'm going to take you through how I start with an actor scan. In this scenario, the actor is me. Well, not an actor, but the head is me. And using that scan data, I'm going to work on top of that in the same way that I would work on top of a life cast, a physical plaster casting of the performer. And I'll be applying clay, digital clay, and conceiving as I go along. I'll have objectives in mind, I'll have design goals in mind, but you will be going right along with me as I explore and discover uh, and fail and fix and find design in the process. The second half, because I've divided it into two different sections, one which is specifically design, the second is presentation. The first half, I'm not going to concern myself with color and the way it's illuminated, the way it is lit on set. The second half, which is all of our presentation, is the color, the context from a visual standpoint, how it's lit, how it's rendered in terms of the materials that would be used ultimately, uh, whether it's a silicone or a latex. And my entire goal is to have a section that's completely dedicated to just concept design and the process of creating this content. And the second half is completely dedicated to the presentation of it, with the ultimate goal being that the director would conceptually see these designs and be able to buy off and know exactly what they're gonna see on set on the day. Let's now get into the heart of this and starting with the design process.